are back in the district, in the 37th district, and we're actually in Mannheim, in Sporting Hill, at the Wampler uh, Honey Farm. So we are going to be joined by uh, Tim and Kelly uh, Miller. Come on in. I want to hear all about your business. Thank Hi. you for uh, bringing us out and, and letting the constituents in the district see what happens out here at the farm. Sure. So tell me a little bit, how long have you been involved in bees and honey? I started with my first hive back in 1994. That was just one hive. Uh, we were married, we had just bought our place, and we had a place to set up our first hive. I had been thinking about it for the previous two or three years and planning for it. I was going to say, what draws a person to, to that? I mean, is it? <laughs> That's probably one of the number one questions that are asked. I tell people it's in your blood. It's either in your blood or it's not. My great grandfather had had, had bees, so, uh, but nobody between him and I really took up the beekeeping. So uh, it was just an interest that I had, and uh, I read up on about it, and uh, in 1994, in the spring, we got my first set of bees. Your first set of bees. First package, yes. And where did you get, where, I mean, are they local? Is, uh, they get, came from the south. Oh, they, they came down from, we, okay. We ordered them from Georgia, and they came to the post office, and they called and said, your bees are here, come get them quick. They shipped them to the they, post they office, mm -hmm. really? Yeah. Okay, do they still do that today? They do. <laughs> All right, good yep. to know. So now, if you started with one hive in 1994, where are we today with your business? Uh, this year I'm up around 300, uh, but that's down about 100 from last year. Is that for any particular reason or? It's, these days it's really hard to keep bees alive and healthy. So I was up to 500 at one point. So it's, it's kind of, it spikes up and down. I, the last, uh, th three out of the last four years, I've lost over 60% of my bees. Oh my goodness, yeah. okay. Well, we'll learn a lot more about that when we go down and see the hives, I'm sure. Kelly, what do you think about the business? Well, I told him when he was interested in honeybees, I don't even like honey. Oh. <laughs> but I've learned to like honey. And I realize not all honey's created equal as well. So. Oh, well, that's great. We'll get to hear about that also. Mm -hmm. I actually love honey, so I am very excited to be here. When I, my kids were younger, they had some allergies, and I always heard if you eat local honey, it mm -hmm. helps with your allergies. Is that a true statement? Local honey and raw, raw honey. Local honey yeah. and raw honey. You don't want it to be, uh, yeah, you don't want it to be filtered. Okay. It has to have bits of pollen in, and it should be local pollen that's that's in the honey and in minute uh, amounts. It All desensitizes right. you, oh. so it, it helps build your immunity. Well, that's good. So I was doing the right thing you there. Were. All right, great. Well, I would love if you would take me down to the bees. Tim, if you'll take me down and show us around, I would greatly appreciate it. Be happy to show you. All right, thanks. <laughs> Off we go. So, Tim, here we are, down by the honeybees. Um, I gotta tell you, I'm not 100% comfortable, but I am trying to be calm and cool. I didn't really uh, realize this was gonna be part of my job as state representative, but here I am in a, you know, pretty outfit. So here you we are, go. You are protected. <laughs> Just don't wave your arms too much. No, I'm gonna keep that on my side. I talk with my hands. That's not gonna be easy for me. So, tell me, this is part of your hives um, that you have, you're about 300, you said? That's correct. Yeah, and of the 300 hives, most of them, they're probably on about 50 to 55 different farms right now. And almost all of those are being used for pollination. Some farms have four hives, some might have eight, a few might even have 12. So you actually pack up these hives and move them? We move them, yeah. If you notice, they're on a pallet. So there's four hives on a pallet, okay. they're held on by clips, and I can come in there with my skid loader and lift them up and load them on the back of my truck. And on your truck, and they stay in the hive. Do you have to do that at a certain time? We, of, we do that at nighttime. At nighttime, yeah. when, the hot, when the bees are all, of course, back all, in the hive. All the bees come home at dusk, and uh, that's a good time to, to load them up, yeah. Okay, so then I guess people like rent the bees, basically. That's, yeah, they do, yeah. And then they're used on their own farms for pollination, and how long do they have to normally stay there? It depends what, they're, what we're pollinating. Like the first thing in the spring, uh, it'd be about the end of April or early, early May is uh, apples. Oh. And the apple, the, the orchards will call me and tell me when I should bring them in. And usually within two weeks they're done. And then the bees go out so they can get their sprays back on again. So then the bees go back to the hive no matter where you move them. Right. All right. right. And there's, good, now give me bees 101. There's yeah. one queen in each of these hives. Each hive has one queen. A uh, couple hundred drones, which would be the male, and thousands and thousands of worker bees, which are all the females. How far can a bee leave and go during the day to get back to the hive at night? They've been recorded as flying as far as three miles. 
But that's a six mile round trip and that's very uneconomical for the bee because he's probably burning up all the fuel that he's carrying or all the honey that he's carrying. Most bees probably, probably fly within, within half a mile radius. That's over 500 acres. And if you bump it up to, to an acre radius, that, that increases it to closer to 2,000 acres. So and I would say- back and forth many times throughout the day, right? All day long, yeah, all especially long. on a nice day like today. Okay, Yeah. so my guys here are working, working, working. They work. The worker bee only lives five or six weeks during the summer and they basically work themselves to death. Their wings will tatter and mm. uh, yeah. Now that same worker bee in the fall, the ones that are born later in the season, yep. that are born in the fall, when it's, the weather's cooling down, there's not near as much work to do, those are the bees then that certainly live all winter long into the next spring to start things again. And you said it's tough to have our bees survive right now. It is hard to keep bees alive and healthy. And there's a lot of, a lot of reasons for that. We can't really pinpoint it to just one thing. But uh, it's parasitic mites, uh, it's pesticides that are being used to kill the bad bugs. You know, here we have good mm -hmm. bugs. Sure. Um, I'm sure they're, they're affected by it, but you know, most of the farms where I put bees are careful. Most of them spray in the evening. Most of them read their, they read their labels. Uh, they're careful. Um, but uh, I'm ready for you to open one up, I think. Okay. Here we go. The smoker is just simply, we got pine needles in there and uh, it gives a calming effect to the bees. Uh, well, that's what we want right now. <laughs> so you're going to pull out some of the honeycomb, correct? We'll take a look to see what they're doing. Mm. Well, they don't seem terribly upset with you so far. <sighs> Honeybees are typically pretty docile. Now I'm moving slow. Uh, when I do this on a regular day, usually I'm all suited up and I'm not working near as slow. I'm kind of in a hurry to try and get what I get done what I can during a day. But if you work slow, the bees are. Uh, Look at you, no gloves, no anything. I I don't like wearing gloves because they're kind of they're clumsy. Bulky. But um, like I said, during the day, usually I'm wearing gloves. This is, a, this is a strong hive. You can tell because there's bees down at the bottom, there's bees up on the top. And uh, a strong hive can have as many as 50 to 60,000 worker bees in it. Wow. Okay, they have that pretty well, wow. pretty well drawn out. Look at the honey just dripping off there. Okay. That's so what you like to see. So we are going to take that up. I, I'm, I'm, we're going to see each step of the way. So as you take them out, we'll then go up to the extractor and we'll see how you actually get the honey. I think it's a common misconception that uh, bees are out to sting you. Yeah. Um, and yellow jackets are the blame for a lot of bad rap on honeybees because a lot of people just assume that they're all bees because they're all stinging insects. But yellow jackets are wasps. They often live in the ground and oftentimes you'll disturb them when you're hiking or mowing mm -hmm. or something like that. And, uh, and they're much more aggressive. Whereas honeybees are pretty docile mm -hmm. unless you happen to pinch one. If I would pinch one between my fingers, uh, I would get stung. Okay. I used to wear a wristwatch and I don't wear a wristwatch anymore because bees will walk up your arm and they would get pinched under your, your watch and I would always get stung there. Okay. But, um, if I just lay that aside in an empty box and I'll just pull one more frame out and then we'll just close this back up for now. Up on top there where you saw is where they store all the excess honey. Down in here would be where the queen is laying. These would be called the brood chambers and that's where she would lay all her eggs. She lays up to 2,000 eggs a day. So she's a busy lady. She is a busy lady. <laughs> it's tough to be queen. This is what I like to see. This, this is a sign of a healthy hive. And these are all worker bees that you see. I don't see any drones either. So there you can see that's all brood <clears throat> with honey all around the perimeter, a little bit of pollen. The young bees, as they, as the larvae needs to be fed honey and pollen. So uh, this is all capped brood, and in interspersed there, I don't know if you can see it or not. There's little white larvae, and uh, they start out almost. It starts out as an egg for three days. After three days, it'll hatch into a tiny, tiny little larvae. And the nurse bees begin to feed that little larvae for the next eight days. And that little larvae just gorges. 
until it fills up the whole cell, at which point then it's capped. And then the whole process of metamorphosis takes place where it spins a cocoon. And at the end of a total of 21 days, it will emerge as an adult bee. So here we are in the uh, extraction room. And Tim, what, what do we have here? What are we looking at? These are frames that have already been uncapped. And what that means is the wax has been cut off of the frame so it allows the honey then to be spun out, which we'll look at in a minute. This is called an uncapper. Um, for somebody that only has a few hives, that would be like a hobbyist. Okay, they don't um, have this equipment. They would not they? have this equipment, but okay. they would use a knife and they would come down and they would have to cut the wax off of these frames. This does the same thing. It's, a, it's two knives and we'll just run a couple more through. Well, this makes your job a little bit easier when oh, you're yeah. producing as much honey <laughs> as you do. So it's just cutting the wax off the end, getting the ready. Oh, I see the honey just dripping out. Oh my gosh, it looks delicious. Yeah, there's a knife on each side oscillating back and forth. And there's heat. There's hot water running through those knives so that it makes the process oh, so a little. Oh, so they're warming it up as they're going. Yeah, oh. it, makes, it makes the cutting a little easier, less ragged. Uh, that yeah. is splendid is what it is. That just makes it so easy. I have two extracting units. They're, they're different, but they do the exact same thing. This one holds about 40 frames and this one's already loaded. So I'm gonna go ahead and close that and I'll turn that on. And uh, while that gets started, we'll go ahead and load this other, this other extractor. Here may be a silly question. I don't know if you can answer or not, but out of one frame, how much honey can you get? Can you get a cup of honey? Can you get... One box holds nine or ten frames, depending on how you load it. Mm -hmm. If the bees have that, if the bees fill that full, that holds about 35 pounds of honey. So if you have ten frames in a box, that'd be about three and a half pounds of honey per frame okay. if, it's, if it's filled. If it's filled. If they're yeah. good worker bees. <laughs> for harvest, One of I the guess. things that I've been doing, I wouldn't have to, but by Labor Day weekend, I'd like to have all my bees move from Lancaster County up to Lycoming and Tioga County. And there's hundreds of acres of goldenrod blooming up there as well as asters, mm -hmm. and there's still some clover left over. So it's called following the bloom. Okay. The bloom is pretty much done here in Lancaster County. And so you get your bees up there and it gives them another month of being able to put some more honey away for the winter before the winter comes. And we package that then as Pennsylvania Mountain Wildflower Honey. And a lot of people think that honey is just honey, it's just honey. And uh, eh, that's not true. <laughs> and then as soon as the bees are finished working up, up in uh, Tioga County, usually about the beginning of, about the beginning of uh, oh, October, then we start thinking about getting them together, getting them loaded on a tractor trailer and getting them down to Florida before the snows come. So you stay busy all throughout the year? By taking them to Florida, it gives you, it gives you some work to do over yeah. the winter time. Well. I mean, we still be packing a lot of honey and, and selling it, but as far as the bees, um, if we kept them here, there would really be nothing to do over the winter time. Right. And uh, if it's a winter like last winter, it's hard. It's hard for the bees. It was cold. And the bees do have to, bees are the one insect that keeps a climate controlled uh, environment. They have to keep it warm. They're not like some insects that burrow into the ground and mm -hmm. just kind of go into dormant. They have to keep it warm because they're alive all winter long and they're feeding on that honey and metabolizing that into heat energy. So bees are pretty interesting. So bees are interesting, <laughs> I'll tell ya. It's kind of like a merry-go-round. That's what I tell the kids when they come here for field trips. You turn this on and the faster it spins, the harder it is for the honey to stay in those cells and it, gets, it, comes. it, it, it flies off. Just like, just like if you let go of a merry-go-round when it's being spun. All right, so from there, then you pipe it out. Oh, I see it coming out of this spinner, certainly down here. The centrifugal force forces the honey out of the cells against the sides of the drum. It'll run down to the bottom, run into this uh, clarifier tank. Uh, that tank is on a float switch, which will soon kick on and then that'll pump the honey up and over into the bulk tank where it's stored until we fill up. We fill 55 gallon drums and then from there we put it out into the warehouse. Hey Tim, we have a 55 gallon uh, barrel ready to go, so tell me what we're gonna do. Okay, from the extractors, the honey is being run into that clarifier tank. From there it's being pumped into this bulk tank, which is an old milk tank. 
it's all stainless steel, so it works great. This will hold about five barrels when it's, when it's close to being full. Um, the way we store our honey then is in barrels. Uh, all the honey is being produced now, so we put in barrels, it gets put into the warehouse, and that's where it stays until we're ready to bottle it. And then we bring it from the warehouse um, into, the, into this room. Um, so we will okay. run, run some honey in oh, here. This is gonna be what, pure gold. Oh my gosh. Oh, that is beautiful. The drum is 55 gallons, and weight-wise, that equates to about 640 pounds. What's really amazing is there's a statistic out there that's been used for many years. Even your old books on beekeeping uses the same statistic, and that's the fact that one individual bee produces one twelfth of a teaspoon in its lifetime in its lifetime work. You are kidding. One, one bee only produces one twelfth of a teaspoon. Oh so my gosh! So when you see this much, it takes a lot of bees. This much honey, it it's. Uh, makes you appreciate the work that they do. Absolutely. All right, we are now in the packaging room and we're joined again by Kelly. Thanks for coming back with us, Kelly, because you're going to talk about some of the products. You know, when we make your honey, we waste no part of it. So we use the wax also. But tell me, first of all, let's start with how the honey, it's over, it's in the 55 gallon drums and we go from what to get to the next part? From the 55 gallon drums that we store away in the warehouse, yep. as we need whatever variety it is that we need to bottle, uh, we bring that honey from the warehouse. It gets rolled up into a big uh, melter unit over in the other room where mm -hmm. some heat is applied um, so that it flows because this is all by gravity. Okay. And cold honey just does not flow. Also, if there's any crystals in it, we want to make sure that those crystals have been melted out. Um, and this is where my daughters come in and they've done a good job. They have all the, they'll do all the labeling ahead of time. They put the labels on the jars, and then they do a lot of the bottling also. And it's just a matter of pulling this lever down. Uh, I don't have any honey in the in the unit right now. That's all right, so but that fills it real simple. Pull the lever down, release the lever, and it stops it. And uh, it gets moved on. We move the next one in. So, yep. Tell me this, as I look at some of your products, I know this is the beautiful honey that we just made, but this is a little bit different. That product. Go, go, tell me just real briefly what that is. Most of the honey that has the Wampler label on is honey that we buy in from different parts of the United States. Mm -hmm. Like that clover honey comes from North, uh, South Dakota. Mm. Most of uh, the honey in the United States comes from the Midwest. Oh, is that right? Yeah. And then our local honey is uh, what we call Lancaster County Spring Blossom, and that is not pasteurized. We, we only warm it enough just so it flows. We try not to take it past 115 degrees, uh, and then we call it, we'll call that raw. Um, it still has the natural enzymes. Heat will destroy the natural enzymes once you get up over 120 degrees. And that's delicious. <laughs> this is one of our blocks of the wax from all the wax that we had cut off the edges that the bees had produced. Um, melted down, right? Melted down. Into a block. Mm -hmm. And then you make some absolutely great products with this. Somewhat, yes. Actually, my mom does a lot of the hand cream, but I had started it years ago. Um, kind of worked with the recipe. and. Um, so, and then make lip balms, I make a salve, I make sugar scrubs, just I don't always have everything at the same time, I'm too busy being a mom. Sugar scrub but, sounds uh, wonderful. Yeah. Beeswax is great, and honey is in like the lip balms as well. It's a natural um, emollient, it makes your everything feel so soft, and mm. the uh, honey um, attracts moisture, and so it keeps your lips nice and soft. So. So as we wrap up, I first of all thank you for giving us a tour and for letting the people in the district be able to see exactly what you do. I always say we have these little gems hidden away in Lancaster County and it's so important. And I am happy to share part of our agricultural history. I sit on the Ag uh, Committee up in Harrisburg and I think honey plays a big role in that. Can you just add any parting thoughts with us? Yeah, honey and pollination. Um, there's a statistic that says that Every third bite that we take of, of food that we eat is either directly or indirectly uh, comes from uh, products that have to be pollinated. And uh, honeybees do 80% of that pollination. Mm -hmm. Another statistic is that uh, when you think of, a lot of times when you think of bees, you do think of honey, but honey in the United States is valued at $250 million. Pollination and how it relates to agriculture is rated, is. Uh, rated at 15 billion. 
So uh, it's a very, the value very that critical honeybees industry. do to pol for pollination in the agricultural industry is, is quite a bit more than what the actual honey is valued at. Again, I appreciate you taking a minute to uh, share with the 37th District exactly what it is you have here and what you do. And uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you bet. You. you take care. Have a great day. Mm -hmm. Joining me now is Karen Rakaseka. She's the apress for the Department of Ag. Thanks today for joining me, Karen. Thank you for having me. Sure. Um, as I was out at the Wampler um, Honey Farm in Mannheim, and we get to tour that and see some really great things, I, I, the first thing you learn is these are much more than just honey. Uh, they're very important to our ag process. Can you just kind of tell us a little bit about that? Well, as, as you know, Pennsylvania is very, very diverse agriculturally. We have uh, everything from beef and dairy cows, poultry, um, soybeans, food grains for, for people and for animals, as well as um, lots of, of gardens and that people have. And bees play a huge part in helping agriculture in Pennsylvania. They, um, in the United States, for example, the value of pollination for managed honeybees is 15 to 18 million dollars a year. In Pennsylvania, it's roughly 63 million dollars a year, which is still a lot. It sure is. Yes. Um, it's estimated that each beehive in Pennsylvania provides a thousand dollars plus to um, the surrounding crops that they help to pollinate. Boy, that's incredible. Mm -hmm. And there are other products that come from beehives, including uh, beeswax, well, honey, of course, beeswax, uh, propolis is being used more and more. Uh, some people like to eat pollen, uh, all kinds of things. Yeah, we got mm -hmm. to see that on, on, on the farm, some of it. How, how many beekeepers do we have in Pennsylvania? And are there, does it depend on the region on throughout the state? We have... Um, about over 3,000 registered beekeepers. Uh, and I'm sure there are a lot of beekeepers out there that don't realize they're supposed to register with us. But uh, we they have- They do that oh, with the Department of Ag? Yes, okay. that's right, that's right. And um, so we have over 3,000. Uh, a lot of them are uh, joining their local bee clubs and the state beekeeping club, which um, are, are helping them to become better beekeepers. This year alone, um, we have over 400 people that have become beekeepers or registered for the first time. So even if they're just kind of doing it as a hobby, they right. should register with right. you. Okay. Whether that's a, the biggest commercial person, beekeeper in Pennsylvania, or somebody that just has one or two hives. Mm, okay, that's interesting. So, and, and region-wise, are there more in particular areas? Yes, there, there definitely are. The uh, southeastern part of Pennsylvania, there are, are lots and lots of beekeepers there, and there's also uh, all along the western part of Pennsylvania, there's a lot, but they can be found uh, definitely in every county. Okay. Maybe not every township or borough, but every county. With, with the amount of crops that we have across the state, how many are actually being pollinated with bees? Is there a percentage that's out there, or it, how do you tell? Or yeah, it, It's hard to give an exact percentage. There are... Um, as far as the bees are concerned, they, they have plants in different categories, and some plants are pretty much entirely dependent on honeybees for pollination. Other plants, um, their the yield and quality of the of the fruit of the, the product will be increased by honeybees, that, and they would be working with other native pollinators or uh, you know bats and. Uh, wind, that kind of thing, and then so it, it does affect the quality of the product. Oh yes, definitely, definitely, mm. definitely. Um, and then there's some plants that the bees will visit. It's sort of like our junk food, where they they like to go, but they don't get any any. Um, they don't help with the pollination. You know, they just like to. to go. Really? Yeah. Like so they like corn is food. one. <laughs> really? Okay. Uh -huh. But alfalfa and 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 um, and clover fields that that are. Dairy cows, of course, mm -hmm. eat a lot of, that's impacted. A big, yes, a big impact, yes. They do a lot of pollination for, for alfalfa and clover and uh, pumpkins. Um, they help with strawberries, they help with grapes, um, peaches, they help some with apples, all kinds of things. Hmm. Yes, it's a big impact. 
And, and the beekeeper that I was with mm -hmm. moves the hives, mm -hmm. loads them up on the truck, right. and he goes down to Florida and, and helps with mm -hmm. the orange blossoms. And do, do a lot of them do that? And, and do they travel? Where all would they travel? In, in Pennsylvania, 84% um, approximately of the, the beekeepers that are registered have 10 or fewer hives. And a lot of times they are more stationary or they may go to move their bees to a local orchard okay. or pumpkin field. Some of the, the larger migratory beekeepers will go, um, they may go down to Florida for a while and then they'll travel, some will go out to California for the almonds. Almonds are 100% um, dependent on honeybees for pollination. Oh, yeah. Well, I love them. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> And some of them may go up to Maine for blueberries and then just kind of travel down the coast to cranberries and apples in New York and peaches, pumpkins. and. Um. Do you want to touch it all? You brought a hive with us, which mm -hmm. is great. Can you, can you just kind of give, a, you know, Bees 101 and how they work? Uh, <laughs> this is um, an observation hive. It's, it's one frame that I took out of the hive this morning. Right. Um, there are approximately 50,000 worker bees, which are the females, in the hive. They do the bulk of the work. There's one queen bee, obviously a female, who, mm -hmm. who will lay eggs and can lay up to 2,000 a day. Yeah. <laughs> and then the larger bees in here, which to some people look a little more scary, are the drones or the male bees. and they actually cannot sting. Oh, they can't sting at no, all. They can't oh, okay. sting. Mm -hmm. And a honeybee, if um, if she stings you, she dies. I know. So they don't really want to sting you. <laughs> I was going to say they realize that, right? Yes. Within their yeah, own. <laughs> yeah. They they don't really want to sting you. Um, as we're getting into the fall, the the worker bees, the females, will chase the drones out. So let me ask you something. If somebody out there has interest in becoming a beekeeper, mm -hmm. can they contact Department of Ag? Oh, certainly. Okay. Certainly. Yes. We'll put that that's contact great. up then for them okay. also. Yeah, I yeah. think that's important. And their local bee clubs. And, and their local state bee beekeeping club. Okay, great. Well, Karen, I appreciate you coming out to uh, help expand on our on our education of bees. Any last words? We have about a minute left, but yeah. Um, I, I get asked the question uh, how a, a person that doesn't maybe want to have bees, how they can help. And there, there are different ways. One would be buying um, honey from a local beekeeper. And the, the I taste, don't have problems with that one. I love that one. <laughs> right. There's a big difference in the taste, oh, isn't absolutely. it? It's wonderful. Um, planting some flowers that, that the bees will like or other native pollinators mm -hmm. will like, that, that's a big one. Um, even as simple as if you're going to be spraying an insecticide or a pesticide in your yard, pay attention to what the label says and follow it. And help and protect that, our bees. Right, right. Well, great, great. Well, Karen, I thank you so much for coming and, and, and yeah. helping us learn all that we possibly can. It's, a, it's, a, it's an incredible industry, and I didn't realize quite how much revenue was, uh, was uh, out there within Pennsylvania. So thank you. Uh, that's all the time we have for today's program. If you have any questions about what you've just seen or any state government concerns, you can contact me at my district office or through my website or my Facebook page. The information will appear in just a moment. And thanks for joining us, and please join me again next time for another edition of Legislative Report.